Hello, it's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. I'm glad you're with me. I'm doing my story a lot earlier. I'm going to go post it in town because I think it's messing up my internet out here doing so many stories. Please let me know if you like these, if you want me to continue these or not. I'm not sure how many people are listening to them. Or, um, I'm on book six, and this is The Legend of the White Raccoon. This is a story by Lee Roddy, and it's from the DJ Dylan Adventure Series. Chapter 5, Secret in Devil's Slide Canyon. DJ jumped up and snapped on the light. He saw the underbrush waving violently. Small trees and dry limbs cracked sharply, but the earth rumbled so loudly the boy knew it wasn't an angry bear charging downhill. Then his flashlight caught a movement below the threshing brush. A boulder was hurling down toward them. Look out, DJ yelled. For a moment he held his light on the frightening sight. Then he flipped the light near his feet, looking for a way to escape. His beam showed another boulder beside him. Instantly, DJ dove behind it though it was close to the river and he felt his water hit his boots. DJ lost sight of Alfred. DJ pressed against the small boulder and heard the bigger one rumbling faster and faster toward him. There was a horrible grinding sound as the boulder... Excuse me. struck DJ's smaller one. He felt the boulder shudder. The runaway wobbled unsteadily on top of the stationary one, seeming to hang in mid-air for a moment. Then the great stone sailed over DJ's head and landed in the river with a mighty splash. After a moment, DJ slowly raised his head and shone his light on the water. The boulder was still settling, sending bubbles up around it. Phew, that was close. He flipped the light back on the bank. Alfred, where are you? O over here. The voice was shaky and weak. DJ's beam caught his best friend cautiously peeking out from behind a wide stub of Douglas fir that had been cut down. DJ called. You okay? Uh, I, I, I think so. Just scared and scratched up some. Wow. How do you suppose that thing broke loose? Alfred turned his light on the boulder. The water was now rushing around it in a white spray. No telling, DJ replied. He tipped his light up the hill the way the danger had come. Boy, look how it smashed everything flat. Just be glad it wasn't us, Alfred said, his voice still quivering with fright. Hey, the dogs are barking treed. Let's go, DJ cried. They're not a far. <clears throat> the boys were glad to get away from the boulder area and get over their fright. As they fought their way through the underbrush and tall conifers, they could hear Bugler's magnificent baying and Hero's sharp, loud, louder bark. You suppose it's the white raccoon? Alfred panted, ducking around a cedar tree. Sure would be nice. DJ stumbled and almost fell into the flashlight's beam. He recovered his balance and ran on. The boys slid down an embankment, jumped fallen logs by the river's edge, and came at last to where they could see the dogs. A cottonwood with bright yellow leaves seemed to shimmer in the cold moonlight. At the tree's base, Bugler was so anxious to get the game in the 20-foot tall cottonwood that he was biting off chunks of bark. Hero was leaping high into the air and falling back in vain efforts to reach whatever was hidden up in the rustling leaves. Both boys aimed their flashlights toward the trees. For a moment, there was nothing visible. Then the pair then a pair of eyes glowed from a big limb left of the trunk near the top. There, 
A white puff of steam marked DJ's words as, ex as they exploded in the night air. See it? What is, what is it? DJ asked, moving around so his light could penetrate the prey's hiding place. DJ saw a small animal about the size of a big tomcat suddenly stand up from where it had been crouching. It's a bobcat, look out! He's moving! The animal came down the tree trunk so fast it didn't seem to touch anything at all. Still way above the ground, it suddenly leaped into space. Watch out! DJ's cry was almost too late. The animal sailed across the face of the moon. It struck the ground running. The dogs were almost upon it, but the cat was amazingly quick. In two bounds, it was away from the river. As the dogs barked furiously behind it, the bobcat sprang into another taller cottonwood. DJ breathed a sigh of relief for the small, short-tailed cat is one of the most fearsome fighters in the wild. Both boys could dogs could have been seriously hurt. The boys tried to calm their dogs down while they played their lights on the treed animal. It hissed and spat at them from the safety of a high limb outlined against the moon. Sure wish that was the white raccoon, Alfred said softly. Well, DJ said at last, we don't want this cat. Let's put the dog's leashes on them and lead them away. Otherwise, they'll stay here bellowing all night. They're sure hurting my ears, Alfred admitted. He caught Bugler by the collar, but the excited hound kept trying to twist away and get to that treed cat. DJ had the same problem with Hero. Finally, the boys dragged the protesting dogs away and back down the way they'd come. DJ said, maybe we'd better get home now so we'll get enough sleep to make it to Sunday school on time. Could we first take a look where that boulder came from, DJ? See what caused it to break loose and almost kill us? The boys tied the dogs to a small ponderosa and scrambled up through the broken brush along the path the boulder had made. Their lights finally settled on a slight depression where the boulder had laid for years. Hey, DJ whispered, bending over and shining his light on the close to the ground. Look at that. His friend knelt and moved the flashlight to shine on freshly churned chunks of dirt. Looks like a crowbar or pry bar marks, see? Alfred gently touched the foot-long rock near where the huge boulder had been dislodged. This rock was used as a fulcrum. That means it gave him, um, well, they'll say it. A what? You know, a support on which a lever turns in raising something? The bar was laid across this rock. See how the rock cracked from the way to somebody leaned hard on the other end of the bar? DJ whispered, you mean that bar just didn't get, boulder just didn't get loose by itself? Slowly, DJ straightened as the meaning hit him. Then he rapidly flicked his light around the area and stopped the beam. Look, a man's boot trap. Come on, Alfred, let's get out of here. Alfred didn't need any urging. Both boys scrambled back through the broken brush the boulder had taken. They untied the dogs and ran back towards the way they'd come. Only when they'd reached the top of the canyon, panting hard and their muscles screaming for rest, did they stop. The friends looked down into the darkness. Mad River was a thin thread far below them now. The moon was starting to sink in the western rim of the cabin canyon, but the cold light still made a path across the river. The water looked like thousands of shiny silver dollars shimmering far below. Alfred, that guy was watching us all the time, DJ said, tiredly trying to catch his breath. You mean Sky? Who else? If he hit us with that boulder, it would have looked like an accident. Nobody would have known what really happened to us. 
His friend shivered. He wasn't trying to scare us away this time. He sure wasn't. That must mean he's hiding something. But what, DJ? Remember the kid, Cleatus? Said the man wasn't really his father? Yeah. DJ took a deep breath. It obviously <clears throat> has something to do with the new kid that we saw last night. They've got some kind of secret. Well, they can keep that secret for all I care, DJ. I don't want to solve any mystery bad enough to get clobbered. DJ nodded. He took a good grip on Hero's leash and turned away from the country road that would lead them home, or turned toward it. Funny thing about that kid, somehow I think I've seen him someplace. Yeah? Where? I don't know. Maybe it'll come to me. The boys hurried towards home. DJ's mind was really churning out thoughts. They're all scary. He said, Alfred, even if the sheriff's office or the game warden nerve can come and can't Alfred, even though the sheriff's office or game warden can come investigate because of the poacher's snares, they may not believe Sky tried to kill us with that boulder. You mean that if we're that we're going to keep after that white raccoon? We're going to be in bigger danger than we already are? If Skye's got a good enough reason, he might even come after us wherever we are. Halford stopped to catch his breath. If you're trying to scare me, DJ, you're doing a mighty good job. DJ didn't answer. He knew he and Alfred probably were in the greatest danger of their whole lives. Wow. That is a very scary thing. Can't imagine having somebody try to roll a boulder down on top of me. Well, that's the end of chapter five. So I want to say goodbye for now. I love you. I really do. More importantly, God loves you. And I want you to always remember, keep dreaming and keep a story in your heart.